G'day guys, welcome back, welcome to pouring your heart out. I am going to make a holographic inlay. Now the reason why I'm going to make an inlay is because I've got these open little bezel trays that I bought from Amazon and I want to do, there's a whole range of things I want to do with them, but I thought I'd like to do a holographic pendant. So, and then I thought, well, I can stick them. This is the, um, this is diffraction grating paper. I'll start with this. Now I'm just touching underneath because you can't touch the top, all right? Otherwise you'll leave fingerprints. But, so this is the back of it. See if I can show you. Look at that. So I'm sure you guys have seen this diffraction grating paper before. It's just a really thin sheet of paper. It came in a roll like that. This one doesn't have like a top and a bottom that you have to peel off. It's just this thin sheet. So what I thought I would do <clears throat> is... Or wouldn't it be nice to actually put those straight down and pour resin in and then when you peel them back, <clears throat> excuse me, then, you know, the holographics will stay. But it's not sticky. So, because I've got this, you know, resin tape that's, um, that's sticky and you actually use that on your bezels. So that's for another video. So I thought, well, that's not going to work. Um, you could potentially put some glue on the back and stick those down, but then it may damage the diffraction paper. It's very, very delicate and it's expensive, so I don't want to go sticking anything on it. So, roundabout story, this is why I'm going to make a silicone insert. So today's video will just be how to make the insert and the next video I'll show you what I'm going to do with it and make the holographic pendants. Right, so... Um, I had a, this is how, this is the size it came in. Now, when you're buying it, look for diffraction, I just got on Amazon, um, search diffraction sheet, 13,500, because it comes in different, like the amount of lines that's been laser cut into it. So this one's 13,500. So I measured and it is 15 and a half centimeters wide. And I had a look in my kitchen to see what I had that was a similar size. So this one is 16 centimetres. So I thought I'll just put, pop it in there. Um, now you could cut it to size, spray some glue on the back and stick it down. But, and then pour over it, you know, so that you don't get the silicone leaking underneath. But I'm going to do just a very, very thin covering of silicone so I'm not going to stick it down now I do want to show you something else I'm going to bring you down I've got, I've got lots to tell you I'm sorry it's going to take a while now have a look at this piece of diffraction paper now can anybody see a problem with it anybody <laughs> I'll give you a minute. <laughs> you might not be able to see straight away, but there. See that line there? I was looking at it and I was thinking that, because when they print it, it must, they must do lines between, like do it in sections. So I'm going to actually cut on that line you can see it a bit better now because you know you'd be disappointed if you put this whole sheet in a tray and then you unmolded it and you had a big line right through your tray so if you've got one of these just have a look and see where your line is so I'm going to actually cut this here um, I, and I don't think oh. see I don't have another line I don't have another line, it's just that one. So I'm gonna cut that piece there and I can use that for something else. And then I'm going to um, cut another section. It's just that where the line is, it's only 
it's only going to be 22 centimeters or 22 and a half centimeters and my tray is like 26 and a half centimeters so I mean I could put it in there but it would only come up to there so maybe I will anyway I'm just going to cut that off um, and put you back up on the tripod not getting dizzy are you with me moving you around you can't really see the diffraction colors now so I've still got a couple of things more to tell you about diffraction sheeting wear your gloves all right because skin has natural oils in it and if you touch it you very well will leave a fingerprint now I did actually when I was playing with it earlier I did actually leave a fingerprint on the side um, but I managed to get it off and I will tell you how to clean these things get yourself a packet of these little microfiber cloths um, I, I don't know maybe you use them for cleaning your glasses or I actually give my little camera screen a wipe with that before I start videoing so I bought a whole bag of them and they've, they've been very handy so you can wipe over them but um, if you see a fingerprint what you need to do and I, I can't show you a fingerprint now because I got rid of it well maybe I could make another one I can make another fingerprint for you press it on there press 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 all right now I'm gonna have to get you back down again because you can't see it can you oh my gosh Oh, where is it? It's right here. Oh, there it is. Can you see that? Oh, gee, it's hard to, hard to see. It's, I don't know. You can maybe you can just make out that there's a, a fingerprint just there. There, in the yellow. See that? So what you need to do, like you could you could wipe it with um with that and I'm pressing quite hard it's still there see that it's still there so what we're going to do is we are going to and I'll try and do this one-handed I'm going to just put a little dab of alcohol on the end of my little microfiber cloth where's the fingerprint and I'm going to wipe 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 Give it a little bit of pressure. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Dry it off. Move that because now I've got alcohol on. <laughs> okay. And there you go. It has magically disappeared. How's that, eh? See this tiny little dot there? That there? There was like a little crumb or something underneath it just I don't know a little something a little bit of dust underneath it and when I laid it down it's imprinted so it's going to have that little dent come out on my resin as well so but anyway just just be really careful that when you're putting it down make sure there's nothing underneath it because a tiny little speck of something like that will mark it all right, um, I think I've told you everything I need to tell you, so I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but these things I think are important. Right, um, I'm going to cut this, and then I'm going to mix up some silicone. So, yeah, I mean, I wish people had told me all these things, you know, before I started using these. Now, I'm just going to follow this line here. as best I can oops <laughs> I'm going a bit crooked it's hard to see because it's so shiny oh where's the line gone it's somewhere around there that'll do okay so oh now the other thing actually I'm just going to put this away somewhere safe and out of the way for a minute Oh, where will I put you? Where will I put you? Somewhere safe. There we go. On a piece of paper towel. Right. Now, the other thing is which side? 
do you use? That side is really shimmery. The back is not. So I'm holding it under my LED lights. You can see when you look at it, it's got like a white haze to it and there's no holographics. When you flip it over, you can automatically see that it's got the holographics and also it makes a noise. Can you hear that? I'll turn it over. Oh, hang on, that's my, back, that's my other finger holding it. Ah, oh, no, hang on. Okay, now that doesn't really work. <laughs> it's because of the glove. But anyway, go by this. You can see which side. When, when you haven't got a glove on, um, one side makes a noise and the other doesn't. But because I've got a glove on, both sides are squeaking. But you can certainly have a look at that. That's the side you pour your silicone on or your resin if you want to pour resin onto it. And that side has nothing. So look at it under a LED light or a fluorescent light and see which side you want to have up. So your shiny side up. So you could... Oh, look, I might just use that, you guys. Otherwise, it's kind of wasted. And I've, uh, it's only for my pendants. So I'll do that. There we go. <laughs> it fits quite nicely. All right, so I am going to just put you on pause. I'm going to mix up some silicone. And I'll be right back. Right, I've got my silicone. Uh, it's just a, um, a white... Platinum cure silicone, which means it just cures at room temperature. You don't need, to, it's just an equal amount. Like some of them are a, a lot of this and then a little bit of something else, you know, in a little bottle. This is just equal amount, so it's nice and easy. And I've got a little silicone brush there to kind of spread it. Um, now, it, don't worry too much if, you know, if it goes over the edges and gets underneath. It doesn't matter about the bottom, it's the top that's important okay we'll make sure we've got the right side yes we can see the holographics there all right so let's just pour some in and if I've got too much I'll make something else with the leftovers uh, like a little drizzy insert or something use it in one of my molds I do actually have to make molds tonight for my orders but I only want a very thin covering so just spread that out. Silicone's like resin. It's self-leveling, so it will it will just spread out and level itself. So if your table's not level, then you're going to be in all sorts of trouble. My table's level, but I don't know whether my tray is. We shall see. But like I said, yeah, don't be too concerned if, you know, it goes underneath. It doesn't matter. It's the top that's important. A little bit goes underneath, it won't matter, we'll just peel it off. So I don't want to put too much in. You know, if I was making a mould, obviously I'd make it really thick, but I'm just making a little inlay. Because you know when you're doing like a coaster or a pendant or something and you just want to give it that holographic look? Um, you can use this to just place over the top of your wet resin. That's what I'm going to do with the um, with the little pendants. This is actually curling up on the sides because it was on a roll. It's on a roll. So it won't matter. At least it'll stop it from going underneath because it wants to curl up. So I'll just continue to spread this out. I mean, if you wanted to, you could put some tape on it, but... Again, anything that you put on it, like some sticky tape, it may actually stay in the diffraction paper and it'll be there forever. So just got to be careful about what you do with this stuff. It's very delicate. I think that's about right. I'll just fiddle with it for another minute or two, make sure that it's level. See how it's curling over? 
Oh gosh. Gosh. Um what can I put there? Just gonna put that there. And put that there. Just to try and hold it down a little bit. Stay. You wouldn't think it would be so it's still curling. It's because it was on a roll. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, um, you you do what you want to do with it to to hold it down. Um, I'm not putting a lot of silicone on it so it's not going to be really heavy to weigh it down but just put on enough so that you, know, you can't see the the sheet through there it's still a little bit transparent on that side so there we go I'm going to keep it relatively thin so there we go um, that's pretty much all I'm going to do for now. Um, I do give my um, silicone a little torch just to bring up bubbles like I do with resin. Um, you don't have to. It, it, you, the bubbles usually come up to the surface and burst on their own. I'm just in a habit of giving a, a quick little torch. Some more little bubbles there, but um, don't spray alcohol on them. <laughs> You can either just um, wait for them to pop or you can give them a little burst with the heat. Right, so that's that's it. Um, I'll be back in the morning and um, we'll unmold it, hey? And then in the next video I'll show you what I'm going to do with, with these. So I'll see you in the morning. Right, so it's the next day. Our silicone has set up. I've put a couple of extra pop sticks on top just to weigh those edges down that we're wanting to curl and the same here but anyway let's just let's just take it out and see what we've got so it comes out nice and easily put the tray aside um and you had like a tiny little bit of silicone go over the back so this is the back just clean that up real quick and then Just take those off like so. It comes off nice and easily. Let's hope this one does too. <laughs> the only thing that really sticks to silicone is silicone. So with any luck, anything that you put on here should really come off <laughs> like so. I'll be able to just neaten those edges up later on. But um, yeah, it was the only thing I could think of at the time to stop those edges curling up. And then um, hopefully I'll be able to use my, um, my little holographic sheet again. It feels a bit thicker on this side. It mustn't have been quite, mustn't have been quite level. But the tray mustn't have been level. All right, let's have a little look without further ado. So I'll just cut these little thin bits off later oh, let's hope I've got it on the right side hey <laughs> oh, let's hope I put the sheet on the right side now you're not going to see anything probably just at the moment because a it's white um, and it shows up better on a dark background and um, B I'll have to aim it at the lights for you so just loosen that edge there and again I'm trying not to really touch my diffraction sheet because I can use it again oh look can you see can you see <laughs> yeah I want to use my diffraction sheet again so that's why I'm just being really careful with it oops there we go so there's our sheet so this is another reason why I wanted to make the um the silicone insert because I don't want to have to keep using my diffraction sheet over and over because it'll just get ruined. So I make one mold, I can use the mold over and over, and then I've still got my master sheet, so to speak. All right, so I'll just put that over 
there. Right, now let's have a look at it. Now treat this the same way as your diffraction sheet. Don't go sticking your fingers in it, all right? Now let me see if I can pick up a bit of a shimmer for you. Uh, but like I said, it's not going to show up really well because it's a white background. But uh, once I use this in my resin, and you can put this on anything. You know those, um, 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 you know that Druzy, where did I put it? Oh, hang on, over here. Over here, let me grab one. Oh, damn, crash. Those um, Druzy, I'm well, not Druzy, those crystal inserts that I made, crystal clusters that I made. I only use the same mold and fill it up and then just basically lay this over the top and then um, yeah we'll get that holographic imprint into these as well so there's lots of different things you can do with it so there we go that's it for this video I uh, hope you've enjoyed it hope you've learned something about diffraction grating sheets um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video when I use these to make holographic pendants so if you haven't already subscribed hit that little subscribe button and the bell and you'll get notified when i put the video up so thanks again for watching and i'll see you real soon for the next video okay take care bye for now I thought I'd just turn my overhead lights off and see what it looked like in natural light. Look at that. That's just with the, um, the sun coming through my window. Isn't it amazing? So, wow. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that. So, looks amazing, doesn't it? It's so cool. It's got to catch the light at the right place because it's got thousands of little tiny lines etched into the silicone now and the light's diffracting that's why it's called diffraction paper it's diffracting and causing that whole spectrum of rainbow lights so pretty can't wait to use it in my pendants